Hello everyone, we will continue the topic WebDyne Pro ABAP and in the previous videos, we finished with the practical part of inbound and outbound plugs. Now it's a turn to understand each and everything in the debugging mode. So if some confusion is there, it will be automatically cleared. And step by step, we will go for debugging. So firstly, what I will do, I will simply run the application first. As so many parts are there, so we will debug step by step. Firstly, I will run this WebDen Pro application. We will go for some input whenever I'm giving the some input and clicking on to submit button, it will display that data. So firstly, what I will do, I will simply put the breakpoint onto the submit button. This is our submit. You all know we gave some action name. So we will simply put the breakpoint there onto on action display. That is a event handler method. So firstly, we will debug this part and then we will go for inbound and outbound plugs. You all know in WebDen Pro ABAP, yes, we can only go for external breakpoint. And anyways, there's no provision of session breakpoint. Now, I will simply refresh. Now I will give the input and click on to submit button. Whenever I will click on to the submit button, that event handler method will trigger. Now system entered into the debugging mode. You can see the object of node is initial, object of element is initial. Object of node is created. Object of element is created. Now, if the object of element is created, can I use this instance method? Yes, I can use. And now after this, I will get the value of material number into this variable. Now you can see the value of material number is one. Now, this material number, we are passing to this assistance class method. Now, if I want to go inside this method, I will simply do F5. Now, this is our class method logic. Now, input is one. Based upon this input, it will fetch the data of these four column and data will come into this internal table. As of now, internal table has zero records. I will do F6. Now you can see we have one record into this internal table. Material number, MTART, MBRSH, and MEINS. Now, now this internal table is not initial. Yes, because we have one record. So this if condition is true. Now from the internal table, we are passing the data to work area and we are reading at index one. It means this record, which is at index one, will go from internal table to work area. So if I will go for work area, you can see this work area is blank as of now. Whenever I will do F6, now you can see we have the values in the work area. And you can see size sub RC is zero because this read table is true. If size sub RC is zero, from these work area, MT, ART, MBRSH, MEINS, we are passing that data to these output variables, export variable. These are export variables of, of our class methods. This is PMTART, PMBRSH, PMEINS. Now we are simply, simply going for, okay, uh, this if size, then we are fetching the data from MAKT table based upon LT underscore Mara. And you can see into this TMAKT, we have one record. So first internal table matena, if we will understand this query, first internal table matena is going to matena of MAKT table. What is in first internal table matena? One. So this one is acting as a input for MAKT table. Matena is equal to one. It's acting as a input for MAKT table. 
and data of these three column will come into this internal table. And it is our output parameter, output this export. Now control will come to our web then pro method. Yes. And these are our data. So these are our three variables and this is our internal table. We are setting the value of empty ART. We are setting the value of MBRSH. We are setting the value of MEINS. Now this is your material description, MAKT. Now the object of node is initial, object is created. Now if the object is created, now we are binding. This, this internal table has one record. We are binding this data with this particular node. What is the name of the node? Mat DESC. And you all know node has three attributes and it is binded with the table. I will go for execute. Now, as of now, we are able to see the material master data because descriptions are on the second view. Now, whenever you will click on to this button, now we will understand inbound and outbound plugs in the debugging mode. Now I will go for first view. You can see whenever I will click on to this button, material description, this particular, this particular method will trigger on action, on action mad DESC. So I will put a breakpoint here. Now, whenever this outbound plug will fire, we have a corresponding inbound plug also. Then I will put the breakpoint into this. We have a corresponding inbound. Similarly, whenever we will go for outbound plug of second view, this is our outbound plug of second view. This is our outbound plug of second view. On this button, we are going for outbound plug of second view. This is the method. Here I will put the breakpoint. And we have a corresponding inbound plug. So I will simply put a breakpoint there because we covered, yes, whenever we have an inbound plug, we have an event handler method. And for outbound plug also, anyways, I will not say it's, it's it, we have a method, but because we are clicking onto the button, so we have an event handler method. So I put the breakpoint at four places. Yes, whenever outbound plug will fire, yes, we have the breakpoints. Whenever we have the corresponding inbound, yes, we have the breakpoints and sequence by sequence, you will understand. Now, I'll put a simply, simply go for, I will click onto this button. Whenever I will click onto this button, you can see this particular method will trigger on action mad DESC. You can see system entered into the debugging mode. Yes. In this on action mad DESC, SAP has generated the logic to fire the outbound plug. Whenever we have the outbound plug, yes, we have a corresponding inbound plug also. And we have a event handler method. There we have put, there I have put the breakpoint. So whenever I will do F8, now you can see we have a corresponding inbound, inbound plug, inbound plug of second view. You can see how SAP generated the method inbound plug of second view and we have a handle. Yes, you can see breakpoint stop there. Now, if I will do F8, now inbound plug fire. Now we have this second view. Now, whenever I will click on to this button, outbound plug of second view will fire. You will be able to see we have outbound plug of second view. System will enter into the debugging mode. We have a outbound plug of second view. This is the logic which SAP generated. Now, this outbound plug of second view will correspond to inbound plug of first view. You can see this is event handler method for the inbound plug of first view in underscore main and handle. Now we have this. Now you can see we have the expected result. Everything is perfectly fine. And this is a special request, especially in this topic. If you will cram, you will never able to understand because I showed that two views in real project it's it's never two views. We have multiple views and this is the way how we will navigate between the view. So concept must be clear to you. So what is the summary of this particular video? 
in this video, we understood each and everything in that debugging mode. Firstly, I put the breakpoint on the submit button and we understood how the data is coming from the various tables. After that, I put the breakpoint at four places. On action of this button, in that we have the logic of outbound plug. Yes. Then I put a breakpoint in the in the e event handler method, which is for inbound plug of second view. Then after that, I put a breakpoint in the outbound plug of the second view. And then we I put the breakpoint in the inbound plug of the first view. So four places I put the breakpoint and I explained each and everything, how the breakpoints are triggering and how we are getting the value. Yes, why we have those event handler methods? Because depends upon the requirement. You can write the code there. Suppose whenever we are going for outbound and you want to write some code, you can write the code there. Suppose whenever you are navigating to another view through inbound, yes, it there also you can write the code. So that's why we have the event handler methods. So that depends upon the requirement. We can write the code there. So that's it in this video. Thank you.